Why are chlorides bad for our concrete? I'm gonna explain that today. My name is Tyler Lay, and I love concrete so much, I wish I could eat it. Ow! So where do chlorides come from? Well, they may come from de-icing salts that we spray on top of our concrete roads to melt the ice. They also may come from the soils around our concrete structures that could have chloride deposits in them. It could come from admixtures that are mixed into the concrete. That should never happen, by the way. Or they could come from ocean water that splashes up or sprays onto the concrete or is the concrete's right next to it. Chlorides break down something called the passive layer inside of concrete. You're like, what? What's the passive layer? Here's a picture of the inside of concrete. I'm showing a rebar at the bottom with this passive layer around it. This is this protection that the concrete forms around the rebar. Because the concrete's got a real high pH in the pore solution. I've talked a whole video about it that I'm gonna reference here. This is the cover. The cover is the distance from the surface of the rebar to the surface of the concrete. And it is also crazy important for protecting our rebar. This is what it looks like inside of concrete. This is the passive layer, this white material that forms on the surface. And this is where the passive layer is no longer present. So why are chlorides so bad for concrete? Well, the chlorides start penetrating into the surface and more and more. And when they get down to the rebar, they destroy this passive layer. They allow the rebar to be 100% exposed to this water solution. So why is this a problem? Well, when corrosion starts to happen, it causes the cross section of our rebar to change. We actually lose area, we lose material. And then that rebar is not there anymore to help the concrete once it cracks. Also, as this corrosion starts to form more and more, the products that form, the corrosion products, are expansive. They'll actually blast the cover off the concrete, which exposes the rebar for more corrosion. Here's a graph that shows the amount of corrosion versus time. And even when you put rebar in, there's gonna be a little bit of corrosion that's going on. And over time, as the chlorides penetrate, penetrate, penetrate eventually, and they'll compromise the passive layer. So when does this happen? Well, it depends. One typically agreed upon number is 0.4 pounds of chloride per pound of concrete, or 0.4 kilograms of chloride per kilogram of concrete, but that highly depends on the concrete mixture. And there's a lot of people that argue about this. But then, even after the passive layer is compromised, corrosion doesn't start immediately. It actually takes some time, something called the initiation period. So how long is this initiation period? Well, it depends. People argue it have measured all kinds of different numbers, but its general agreement is somewhere between five and 10 years. So when does the concrete start to crack? Well, if we go back to our graph, cracking doesn't happen until way up here. It doesn't happen until there's substantial loss in cross-section of the rebar. That's kind of a big deal. So when does staining happen? That's when these rust stains start oozing out of the concrete. Well, they may happen up here when significant cross-section loss is happening to our reinforcing steel. So when cracks occur, corrosion's already starting to show substantial corrosion and staining. We see even more section loss. So how do you slow this down? How do you stop this from happening? Well, number one, the easiest, the cheapest, the probably the best way is to increase your cover. Cover is the distance between the reinforcing steel and the surface of your concrete. You need two inches minimum if you're worried about chlorides, that's 50 millimeters. I would bump that up to maybe three inches or 75 millimeters if you're extremely concerned about chlorides. Now you can make it harder for the chlorides to penetrate. You can actually use coatings on the surface of the concrete. You can use coatings 
on the surface of the steel. You can actually reduce your water to cement ratio, which is gonna make your microstructure tighter. And you can use SCMs, which again, will form more hydration products and make it harder for those outside chemicals to come into the concrete. There's all kinds of other things you can do. You can use different types of reinforcement. You can use something called impressed current, corrosion inhibitors, sacrificial anodes, amines, and there may be even more. People try heavily to make their concrete structures last longer. This is a big deal. I hope you liked watching this. Please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you have not and leave me a comment below. And check out the bell. It'll actually help you stay informed when I upload new videos. Take care, everybody. Bye.